Hi, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage, and we are here in week three of coronavirus craziness. I'm here in my living room taping one of our five-minute histories. Uh, welcome back if you've uh, joined us before, and welcome to my living room if you haven't joined us. Today, we're going to head over to East Baltimore and talk about painted screens. And we're going to start sort of at the epicenter, um, the area around St. Wenceslas Church um, in a neighborhood that used to be called Little Bohemia. If you know where Hopkins Medical Complex is, um, this is just a little bit north and a little bit east of there. So we're in sort of the heart of East Baltimore. Painted Screen started uh, with a gentleman named William Oktavec, um, who emigrated from Bohemia, Czechoslovakia, in, uh, in 1909. He came to Baltimore. I think he had a brief stop in New York before that, but he came to Baltimore in 1909. Um, St. Wenceslas Church. Um, St. Wenceslas was, is, was the patron saint of Czechoslovakia. Um, so uh, from Bohemia, it was natural for him to uh, locate there. He opened up a, a corner grocery store, lived above it with his family, and in 1913 um, uh, did what he loved to do best, which was paint. And on the outside screen door of his grocery store, he painted uh, a scene of produce um, showing what he sold inside. And the, uh, the artwork was so good that it attracted the attention of his neighbors up and down the block. And very shortly thereafter, he was hired by a neighbor uh, to paint her screen. Uh, and the advantage of the painted screens was that you could see out and light could, uh, and air could go in, um, but uh, nobody could see in. So if you had a row house uh, and your, your living room windows were right on the sidewalk, um, it was really a cool thing to be able to open up your windows, put screens in, and still have both airflow and some privacy. So the first uh, screen that Octavec painted, um, he modeled it after a, um, after a calendar. Remember the calendars that used to have some sort of picture on the top fold and then on the bottom they would have whatever month it was? Well, he had a calendar with uh, a mill building with a red roof on it. So the first painted screen in a window was a red roofed mill building. Probably the most popular painted screen is of a red roofed bungalow in a bucolic setting with a windy path and a pond and a couple swans usually swimming around. Um, those were painted all over the place. Um, and if you're thinking, well, that has, you know, there, there's nothing like that in Baltimore and certainly nothing like that uh, in Little Bohemia, Row House neighborhood. Um, you're right, they weren't painted to mimic the Baltimore neighborhoods where they showed up. Um, they were usually painted from a postcard or a calendar or something like that. Um, the neighborhoods where painted screens uh, were seen and still can be seen are, uh, in addition to Little Bohemia, Highland Town, Canton, Fells Point, um, Little Italy, uh, places like that in East Baltimore. We've got, uh, well, let me get back to Octavec. Octavec, uh, um, by 1922, so he paints his first screen in 1913. By 1922, he opens up an art store um, on East Monument Street. He sells art supplies, religious little art objects, um, uh, but he also sells his painted screens. He even frames them for you. But he wasn't a jealous or secretive sort of artist. Uh, in fact, he was sort of, uh, uh, he wanted to share uh, a good thing when he knew it. And he opened up an art class in his, uh, in his art um, shop and taught a bunch of other people how to paint painted screens. Um, and they were definitely a colorful group. Uh, one of the most famous or well-known painted screen um, artists at the time was a guy named Alonzo Parks. Um, he was known as Smoke Hound for the uh, concoctions that he put together during Prohibition. Um, he was also a skilled uh, a harmonica player, uh, an itinerant worker, um, and a fantastic painted screen artist. Probably the most famous uh, uh, student of Octavex was a guy named John Eckert. And if you're from Baltimore and you're of a certain age, you may know John Eckert uh, a little better by Johnny Eck. Um, Johnny Eck was born without legs, uh, but that didn't stop him from becoming a great screen painter. It also didn't stop him from becoming a magician, uh, a sideshow uh, entertainment, and a movie star. He starred in a show, a movie called Freaks, as well as several Tarzan movies. So Johnny Eck, uh, coming out of Little Bohemia, screen painting did quite well. Um, screen, uh, screen paint, painted screens, I'm sorry, uh, show up all over the place. They're in literally 
Uh, hundreds of houses have painted screens in their windows. Churches have painted screens. Uh, businesses have painted screens. Um, even a bar on the block, Baltimore's notorious burlesque uh, area, uh, has a painted screen. A bar called The Midway in 1976 uh, to celebrate the bicentennial, America's bicentennial. Um, the bar owner, a guy named Ch uh, Tattoo Charlie, uh, commissioned uh, painted screens for his second floor windows. Um, to be patriotic. He, he had the Statue of Liberty as one scene, uh, Baltimore's Washington Monument, the Shot Tower were all there, um, uh, helping add to the flavor, I guess, of, uh, of the block in the 1970s. Um, I'm gonna close by saying, if you wanna know more about painted screens, uh, there is a great group, the Painted Screen Society. Um, go online and Google Painted Screen Society and their website will come up. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Elaine F., uh, helped found that. Elaine is by far the world's leading expert on the folk art that is painted screens. Um, she got her PhD, she did a PhD thesis on it, and she has published a book on it. She's also part of the Painted Screen Society. Um, but they've got uh, lots of really great pictures, and uh, they even do painted screen classes. So if you want to learn how to paint your own, um, when we're all allowed to get back together again, um, check them out. With that, I'll say goodbye, and we'll see you tomorrow.